Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure to be able to stand before you and talk about the applications of transition metals in organic synthesis. In the past, chemists have found many different ways to use transition metals for creating new chemical bonds. So today we are able to make bonds between two molecules, both carrying a positive charge using the suitable reducing agent. We are also able to make bonds between two negatively charged molecules in the presence of oxidant. But today's short lecture will be about cross-coupling reactions between positive electrophiles and negative nucleophiles mediated by transition metals. A typical cross-coupling reactions follow this mechanism. The transition metal is inserted between the organic framework and a leaving group in a step called oxidative addition. Then the leaving group is displaced by a nucleophile which is called transmetallation step. And the mechanism is com completed by reductive elimination where the transition metal is abstracted from the complex to create the new bond. Many different groups, can, functional groups, can be used as leaving groups. Halogens are the best known, but they are expensive and often toxic, so not very suitable for large-scale operations. It is very desirable to use hydroxyl group as a leaving group, but this proves to be too difficult yet. So in the meantime, organic chemists use activated hydroxyl groups in the forms of sulfonates, esters, carbamates, or even ethers as leaving group for cross-coupling reactions. And this is where we come into play. Guided by Tomáš Tobermann, I am studying reactivity and developing applications of phosphates used as leaving groups. During our work, we learned a lot about the reactivity of phosphates. They can be notoriously difficult to facilitate the oxidative addition, so we have developed conditions to make the insertion of palladium much easier. We use aluminium chloride to activate the phosphate for the cross-coupling reactions. We also learned that the different phosphates can be used for different purposes. We normally use the ethyl phosphate, which is cheap and has good atom economy, but we can use isopropyl phosphate to suppress certain side reactions if they occur. And we also use diphenyl phosphate, which are stable and more reactive. Using all this knowledge, we have developed several applications for the synthesis of biologically active molecules and molecules for material science. Starting from simple substrates, we are able, by two consecutive cross-coupling reactions, to prepare enol phosphates, which can be used for the preparation of tetra-substituted alkenes like tamoxifene. Tamoxifene and its analogues are used to treat breast cancer. We have also developed a strategy of using phosphates to synthesize biologically active indoles and benzofuranes. In this case, the cross-coupling reaction and the deprotection proceed in the same reaction. Another application of phosphates starts from easily preparable dibromoenol phosphates. We are able to substitute the bromine atoms in the first cross-coupling reaction and then use the substitution of phosphate group for the preparation of molecules with extended pi conjugated systems for the preparation of organic light emitting diodes. And last but not least, we have developed a protocol for the preparation of disubstituted cyclobutanes, which serve as precursors for the preparation of molecules with cross conjugated double bonds called dendrolines. As you can see, the applications of phosphates are numerous. We are currently working on many different projects, for example, using phosphates for the preparation of all sp3 carbon tetra-substituted alkenes, which are otherwise very difficult to prepare. Another interesting example is using simple phosphates for the preparation of functionalized alenes. To conclude, I would like to mention all the people that are currently working on phosphates. Many of them have made great achievements which I did not have the time to talk about today, so stay tuned. And our work has been made much easier but by all the funding we received, for which I am very grateful, and I would like to thank you all for your attention. Thank you very much. And it's time for questions.
Can you start with some yeah, questions? Yeah, start with, uh, you use uh, many metals for this use of this. Uh, yes. Uh, if you can uh, maybe for uh, other people here to avoid which one is uh, the best in your community? We usually use zinc in a form of <laughs> zinc reagents, but we are, we are basically able to use any typical metal for cross coupling reactions except the boron. We are not able to use boronic acid for the uh, substitution of phosphates group. We are not even trying because zincs and uh, and uh, magnesiums are working very well. Okay. Um, another question. Not so so. So thank, thank you, one, you once more.